Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I'm going to show you how I added Firebase Auth UI to my KMM app. I'll start out with a quick little demo. So here I am on the home screen in my KMM app, and I've added a button called Sign In to Start Shopping. Let me go ahead and click on that. Now since I've already signed in, Firebase knows that I've already signed in and it sees my existing account, and so it's prompting me here to sign in as Sarah Tester. But let me go ahead and click on none of the above. And this is where AuthUI takes over. It's a completely pre-built UI, and it allows me to add authentication to my app with just a few lines of code. Now, if you've ever had to add authentication and not use the pre-built UI, you may know that there's a lot of steps involved. If you're doing an email and password combination, then you have to create a user repository and write all of this code. But this, with this, everything is just provided for you. And the only thing that you need to do is supply a list of your providers. So in this case, I've added sign in with Google and sign in with email. So if I click sign in with email, again, it's prompting me because I have um, saved accounts to my phone. But in this case, again, I can say none of the above. And then I can enter in my email. And all the screens you're seeing here, this, these are not composables. This is just completely pulling down from Google Play Services and the Auth UI. So it's really cool stuff. Let me just go back out of here and go ahead and sign in with Google. And then I can just choose the account that I want to sign in with. And I'll pick Sarah Tester. And there we go. It's just as easy as that. Now I'm back to my home screen. I'm signed in. And I've also provided a button to sign out. And there we go, now I'm signed out of Firebase. So let's jump into the code and see what this looks like. Even though this is a KMM app, most of the functionality that I'm going to show you is actually on the client side. So let's get started with my Android build.gradle file. To use the auth UI, I just had to add some dependencies. So I added Firebase UI auth version 7.2, and I also made sure to add Google Play Services auth 20.6. With these Firebase dependencies in place, now it's time to configure the pre-built UI and handle the sign in and sign out events. So to do this, let's go to my Android app and I'm gonna to go to source and I have a services package and I created a sign in service and this takes in a user repository, Firebase messaging, which I'll get into later, uh, Firebase auth and the auth UI itself. And these are all pulling from coins, so real quick, I'll just show you my module here. So to provide all these, I'm just calling um, firebase.getinstance, firebase.messaging.getinstance, authui.getinstance. So these are just easily injected into my sign-in service. Now, here's where you create your list of providers. So in my case, I wanted the Google Builder and the Email Builder. And by creating this list, that's what on the UI, on the auth UI, that's what creates the Google sign in button and the sign in with email button. So next with auth UI, I just create my sign in intent and I just create the intent builder. And then I set the available providers to my list of providers up here. And now you can also customize the UI a little bit. You can set your logo. So for this, I just use the uh, built in account logo. Uh, that's just the circle with the person in the middle. You can also set your theme colors with a resource file. You don't have too much control over this, but I'll show you what I've done. So if I go into my resource package and I created a Firebase UI resource file, and I've called it sign in theme, and it, the parent is Firebase UI. So here I can set all my primary colors um, and I can set what I want the text to look like and the links to look like. And I haven't played around with this too much yet, but overall, you know, it seemed really easy to get my primary orange color in there and make the UI look pretty decent with just a few little customizations. So let's go back to my sign in service. So you just add that resource file right here and then you call build. I'm not using this nonce just yet, um, but I believe that you do have the capability when you configure these builders to include that if you want to. So I might do that in the future, but I'm not using it right now. Here I have a callback flow that returns true or false depending on whether a user has signed in or signed out. And it's gonna actively track whether a user is signed in and out through Firebase. So what it does is I basically set up my all state listener 
and I do a try send. And this is going to be Firebase auth current user. And if it's not null, then it's going to return true. And then I go ahead and I add the state listener. So this state listener is going to see, you know, when you click sign in or sign out, it's going to check from Firebase and return into this flow. And now when you use a callback flow, you have to make sure to call await close. And then I remove the auth state listener. And I'm sharing this flow within the scope that I passed to the function while subscribed. And the default value is just going to be, again, whether this current user is not null. Next, I have on sign in results. So let's go ahead and scroll up here and check this out. This is going to be what's returned after auth UI does its thing and it's ready to process the sign in. So if the results are OK, then I go ahead and get the Firebase auth.current user. And this is beautiful because all of this code is going on in the background between the auth UI and Firebase. So the only thing I have to do is just get the intent result and say, OK, let's get the current user. And then I just print out to make sure that I get the email that comes back. Um, right here, I'm setting a token. And I'm not going to go into this right now. I'm going to talk about this in a later video. So once I have the user, then I go ahead and I insert it into the Firestore database that I've set up for my project. So far, all of this auth UI functionality is included in the Android app on the client side. But now to get into Firestore and the Firestore database, I can actually use my shared module to integrate some of that. And to make this possible, I'm using a third party library. So let me go into Chrome and show you this SDK. So here I am in GitHub and it's called the Firebase Kotlin SDK. And we go down and it's got all kinds of dependencies that you can add. You can add authentication, uh, real time database, cloud Firestore, cloud messaging. So as you can see, we have a lot of resources here that we can use in our KMM module to integrate with Firebase. For my app, I use the Cloud Firestore dependency. So let me show you, let me go in here. So if I go into my shared module and my build.gradle, I've added the dependency here in my common main. So it's Git Live Firebase Firestore. With this dependency in my shared module, I can easily create a user repository that's going to insert my user data that comes back from Firebase Auth UI into my Firestore database. So let me go ahead into common main and I'll go into my data package. We'll go into local, user repository. My architecture isn't great right here. That's because I might tweak it a little bit once I integrate the iOS app side of things. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is and instantiate the Firebase Firestore right inside my user repository here. So I have this suspend function, upsert user, and this takes in the UID that comes back from the auth UI. So let's go back to our sign-in service. So I get the user, and the user has a unique UID that gets inserted into the Firebase auth table which is actually different from the users table that I'm creating in my Firestore database. So what I do is I pass the UID to this function and we'll go back here. So I map the UID to UID in my collection, in my users collection, and I map the token to token. And now in my DB collection users, I create the document ID that's unique for the user. And then I just call set and I call in the user hash map and merge equals true. So if you're familiar with Firestore, you'll see that this definition to use Firestore is a little bit different than you would use um, if you were actually using the Firestore dependency on the client side. So this SDK is a little bit different, but it's really easy to use. You know, you just pass merge equals true. And what this is going to do is it's either going to create a new user if they don't already exist. And otherwise, if they do exist, it's just going to update the data since I've set the merge flag here. This is great because now with this shared Firestore functionality, I can easily share my user repository with both my Android app and my iOS app when I get to that point. That pretty much covers the user repository and also the sign-in service. So with that all configured, now it's time to handle things on the client side from the composables. And to do this, what I've done is I've created a sign-in observer that's going to observe the lifecycle of the main activity. 
So let me show you what this looks like. We'll go back up to Android and then off of my main package, I'm going to go to sign in observer. So what this class does, it inherits from default lifecycle observer. And this is going to give me access to on create, on pause, etc., from the main activity. So this gets in the activity context, which in this case is going to be main activity. And then it also gets the sign in service that we just took a look at. So let me show you real quick for my dependency injection. What I do here is I create a singleton and I'm injecting the main activity context. So I'm adding this parameter here. So I have main activity, which is of type context, then create my sign in observer and pass in this context and we'll call get. And to show you how that's used, let me go into main activity real quick. So we'll go into here. So now with that parameter set up, I can set it up this way. So I can call a sign in observer by inject, and then I can say parameters of this at main activity. And that way I can actually inject the main activity context. So it's specific to the main activity only. Now let's go back to the sign in observer and see what that does. The first thing I do is create a late init variable called get auth results. And that's going to be an activity result launcher that takes in an intent. Next, I set up a flow to see if the user signed in or not. And this is going to use our callback flow that we created in the sign in service. Now let's move on to on create. So I'll scroll up here. So when main activity is created, it's going to get a reference to the registry. So the activity result registry. And then here I'm going to start a coroutine and I'm going to call my sign in service. And now this is where I'm going to collect from that Firebase auth listener flow. So this is going to actually listen. Has the user signed in? Has the user signed out? And that way I'm going to know I'm going to be able to send this flow off to my home screen composable and it will know whether or not to show the sign in button or whether to show the sign out button. Next, it's time to instantiate the get auth results. So let me scroll up here a little bit. So we set this to registry.register and we're going to just pass it in a little code. This can be a hard coded string of whatever you want, like 1001 or 1. Uh, then I pass in the owner, which in this case is going to be main activity. And then I send it type Firebase Auth UI activity result contract. Now this activity result contract is what's actually responsible for launching that Auth UI user interface into our app. So then when it gets the result, I'm going to say in a new coroutine, I'm going to call my sign in service on sign in result, and it's going to pass the result in here. And that's where we're actually going to get the current logged in user and insert it into Firestore. Next, let me scroll up here and we'll go to sign up user. And this is what's actually going to be called from the front end. So when you call sign up user, it's going to call the launcher and it's going to launch this sign in service sign in intent. And this is the intent that we built here. So we've gone ahead and we've assigned our providers. We've set up the layout and our custom logos. So back in the observer, we're going to launch this intent and then it's going to be available from our composable and take over our UI completely. And then finally, in my observer, I just have a simple sign out function that just calls sign in service dot sign out. And that just simply signs the user out from Firebase. And that's pretty much all I need to do to get a sign in with Google button and a sign in with email and password button. So as you can see, that's very little code that I actually had to write to get all of this working. So now let's head back to main activity and see how these things are passed on to the composables. So I've set up my sign in observer here and I've attached the observer to the main activity. My sign in functions are suspending. So the way I've handled this is once I'm inside my composable scope, I set up a remember coroutine scope here. And later on, I use this. So when I'm passing this into my app nav graph, I just call scope.launch sign in observer dot sign out because this is a suspend function. And that way I can easily just pass the Lambda here. And I don't have to worry about being inside a certain coroutine context from my home screen. And then back up here, I'm collecting from that callback flow. So I can see whether or not the user has signed in or signed out. And I'm collecting that as state with lifecycle. 
and I go ahead and I pass that along to my app nav graph. My app nav graph then passes that onto the home screen. So let me go into presentation, home screen. So at this point, all of my composables, they're only just taking on sign in, on sign out, and whether or not the user is signed in or not. And from here, we can just write our standard compose code. Down in my home screen layout, let me scroll up a little bit. So I've got my sign in button here. So it's an outline button and I can just use the code from my sign in observer to either sign in or sign out right from the composable. And that's really all there is to it to get Firebase Auth UI working. And just to show you the difference between using the pre-built Auth UI versus adding something in manually, let me show you real quick. I'm gonna switch back into my food tracker app. And if you've been following along in my videos, then this might look familiar to you. I've also created a YouTube short that demonstrates this functionality, and I'll make sure to link it to this video when I push it up to YouTube. If we go over here to my UI package and go under account, this is all of the code that I had to add to get signing in with email and password and also adding 2FA to work. So this was all basically hard coded. I didn't have a prepackaged UI to do all the work for me, which was fine. I mean, because again, this gives you a lot more control and you can really handle how you want the screens to flow and how you want everything to look. But I mean, look at the difference in code between this and what I just went over. So I have my sign up screen here and I also created a sign in screen that's separate, but uses the same composables. And then here I have my add phone screen. So this is how you can add 2FA. And that's just a really quick overview of what the composables look like. That's not even to mention all of the view model code. I created a shared view model for this. So I have a base that handles basic functions. And then I create separate view models, like here's with phone. So this has all of the phone related functions in it. And then these view models use a user repository to track all of this information. Now look at this user repository compared to the one in my KMM app. So this one, it still gets Firebase auth, but it goes through and it just has to do everything manually. So we have to handle uh, on verification failed, on code sent, we've got to reload users, we've got to handle the sign up, the verify the email, the sign in, sign out, and this is sending the SMS verification. And again, here's more with SMS. And then down here, we verify the SMS code. And finally, down here, we enroll the user. So as you can see, using AuthUI is a really big advantage. If you just want something quick and easy to integrate into your app, then I highly recommend it because you can customize it a little bit and you can get something up and running for your clients really fast. That covers the Firebase Auth UI on the Android side. In my next video, I'll be doing the same exact thing. So I'm going to use Auth UI on the iOS side. And only this time, instead of including the sign in with Google button, I'm going to include the sign in with Apple button. And again, I'm also going to use the sign in with email. And I'm very curious to see how much of the code that I can reuse. I know that I can use my Firestore code, and I'm very excited to try to integrate this with Swift UI and see what's available on that side. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.